Good morning, happy, holy, healthy people of God. Good morning. Oh, come on, let's do that one more time. Good morning, happy, holy, healthy people of God. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice. And be glad Let's say that again. We are going to rejoice. And be glad keep that mind, keep that word rejoice in your mind, because you will hear it a lot during this sermon. Kind of a preview of the ser upcoming sermon. Hope everybody had a good week. It's good to be back. It's good to see some folks I haven't seen in a while. And we have a special guest, visitor, Reverend Ruth. No, 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 no. Bring, bring, bring your place. Most of you know her as Irish, who terrorized, I mean, who lived in the parsonage for a while terrorize the parsonage. There's still holes. I mean, no holes. So those, welcome back. It's good, it's good to be back. Uh, some of you know I was in Battle Creek last weekend for a niece's uh, celebration. She got inducted into a Hall of Fame. So I'm back this week. It's uh, been rainy, stormy, sunshiny, wind blowing, so everything is great. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and start off this worship service. Oh, how excellent you are, our God, in all your ways. You have lifted us up and brought us here to this place to worship you and only you. It's all about you. You're the God of our creation, the audience of one. Now open up our minds and our hearts to receive what you have for us today. Let it be nourishment for us. Let it be direction and correction for us. Let us give us some joy in our lives. We ask all this and more in the matchless, priceless, most marvelous name that we know, that of your Son, our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, and all in attendance said, Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Good morning. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 98 uh, for responsive. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done marvelous things. God's right hand and holy arm have gotten the victory. The Lord has declared victory and has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. The Lord has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth see the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. And sing praise. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre and the lyre and the sound of melody. Let the seas roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. The floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together. May the Lord, who comes to judge the earth, the judge, the judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. And the hymn on number 400 in your hymn book or on the screen says, Come thou forth of every blessing.
The Gospel today is taken from St. John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. And the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commitment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And if I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask in my name, I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Let's say the word of God. Thanks. Thank you, Jane, for being our liturgist today. Thank you. Dan and man for being an acolyte and lighting the candles. Once again, good morning, wonderful, beautiful people of God. Can y'all smile for me for for a minute, please? Can I just get a Can I just get a smile? I know some of us are are, are aching and, and feeling a little a little down. The scripture I've got today is joy, inappropriate joy. Joy, inappropriate joy, out of John 15, verses 9 through 17 that Jean just read. You know, it's hard not to find inappropriate events, activities, and people in life. This week, as I was going over the sermon, and I had a couple of instances. Every time I do it, get ready for a sermon, something inappropriate would happen. Something that fits into the sermon happened to me. Ruth, I was at the parsonage and there was a knock on the door. So I went to the back door thinking it might be somebody from the church. Nobody was there. I go to the front door. There was two ladies standing out there, name badges on, a Bible or something else in their hand. And they saw me and they said, well, you know, we want to explain to you in your community, people in your community may not know the true meaning of Jesus Christ. I'm like, wow, okay. My community, a community of saints, community of Methodists, community of Michiganders, community of what? So I asked them, I was a little taken aback. I said, I, you from Algonac? And they would know we're, we're from around this area. We're, we're just in this area talking. And they wanted to explain to me the book. They were from another denomination, obviously. And Betty Sue, they obviously weren't from Algonac because I asked them, you know, I said, this, I'm the pastor of the church right back here. Oh, you still need to know. about the truth about Jesus. Rich, I had to gather myself for a moment because I'm thinking, okay, God, you, you, you're doing this to me again. You've given me something to use in the sermon that I think is really inappropriate. She started trying to tell me, and she's from the Church of Latter-day Saints, and they carry the Bible and the Book of Mormon. And I thought, I said, let me use this as an opportunity to share some joy. And I said, for me, if you have the Bible, that's all I need. 
She said, well, let me read you something out of the Bible. She had a set script that she had to, this is what she was going to do. She, this is what she had to say It was the most important thing. She was not listening to me. And I said, ma'am, I, I, I'm, I'm a pastor of the little church that's right behind this house. I think I know something about something about the Bible and about your denomination. Well, she just went on with her script, and I'm like, you ever talk to someone and they're not listening to you at all? They just have to say what they have to say and get it off their chest, and, and, and just you just have to sit there and just listen to them? And I said, well, I, I shed some, some words of wisdom with her, with them, and they left um, a little disappointed, Al, because they couldn't give me something, and they couldn't, this is what I do. And then later on in the week, I had a church leader come to me and just, with some inappropriate comments. And I'm like, okay, all right, I, I, I hear you, God, I see you, God. They, they don't, people talk, and they don't respect the person that you are, or they have something on their mind that they have to get out because they just have to get it out, and you just have to sit and listen to them, and then they turn and walk away. And they don't care how you take it. It's kind of inappropriate. The visitors from the church, church leaders, this is what I want to say, and you just have to do it with the grace. I preach grace. I'm, I'm a graceful person. I try to handle grace. But, you know, inappropriate comments usually come at funerals, at weddings, at all kind of gatherings. We heard them. I was at a dinner last week for my niece and some couple of people made some very inappropriate comments and I had to kind of correct them in a nice way. Most of the times these folks don't understand or appreciate the situation or that they're in. They just have, this is what I want to say. This is what's on my mind. Sometimes everything you say does not need to be said, amen? Can I get amen? amen? You don't always have to say what's on your mind. It really brings us to our text today. Most of the time, Jesus is bringing us words in this text today that we might feel is inappropriate. He might have said things because Jesus is at a point of his death, clearly. And in this context of some words, that really could be heard and taken as being inappropriate. He says this, let, your, let not your hearts be troubled. He's about to die. I will not leave you orphaned. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. And after this extensive discourse in John 14, verses in chapters 14 and 17, we are told that Jesus went up with his disciples to a garden where there he was arrested. From there you can follow the reading accounts of the four gospels, all events leading up to Jesus' crucifixion and death. Yet, yet with everything that was going on and happening to him, Jesus still mentions joy. Can you say joy? Joy, joy seems to be inappropriate considering what Jesus is telling his disciples that they must do and that he is about to leave. Joy seems like the furthest thing that he should be saying. As far as the followers know, there is no coming back from death. He could talk all day about the fact that if Jesus continued on his current course, there'd be little doubt that he would be arrested, put on trial, convicted, crucified. That would be the normal sequence of events that was Jesus was going to have to deal with because the powers were coming against him. And then Jesus was arrested. There's an alternative to their assumption. They might have remembered the things that said, he turned water into wine, he healed a nobleman's son, healed a man at the pool, he fed 5,000 plus, he walked on water, healing a man born blind, raised Lazarus from the death. So maybe he knows what he was talking about. But then, was there any reason for hope or joy in the hours 
before and after Jesus' arrest. At that moment, that very moment, the disciples are really, really hard pressed to find joy anywhere. Again, yet Jesus had just talked about it. He said, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. In the next chapter of John, Jesus said, very truly I tell you, you will weep and you will mourn, but the world will rejoice. That's my word, rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. Until now, you have not asked anything of my name. Ask and you will receive, and that your joy may be complete. Hmm. The fact that joy is continued throughout the Bible, the psalmist, when talking about the Israelites coming out of the Egyptian slavery, wrote, so he brought his people out with joy. His chosen ones were singing, Isaiah spoke of a ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with rejoicing and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. Jesus' birth was announced as good news with great joy. God spoke of joy and rejoicing in the Sermon on the Mount. And when he said, blessed are you, when people revive you, rejoice and be glad for your reward is in heaven. We see instances of Paul rejoicing in prison. We read about the joy of faith and the rejoicing of the Lord. And of course, Paul lists joy as one of the fruits of the Spirit. The list could go on, but clearly joy can happen in the midst of trouble. Can somebody say joy? joy. So as Jesus is preparing his followers about the trouble that's coming, is it not inappropriate for Jesus to talk about joy? Hmm. He knows what's about to happen. He's been preparing these, what do you call them, rich knuckleheads, these disciples, about what's coming. But he also gives them something that they can hold on to, joy. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, abide in my love. A few moments later, he told him, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Jesus chose them, regardless of how they felt. They were where Jesus wanted them to be. They had a lot, experienced a lot, there was a lot more for them to experience, much more to learn including the depth of Jesus' love for them. Along with his love, at times that they least expected, they were going to experience joy in their lifetime. Jesus said to his disciples, I have said these things to you, that my joy, my joy, be in you, and that your joy be complete. I could do a whole sermon just on that. My joy be in you. Think about that for a moment. He knows what's about to happen, but yet he is still joyful. He is still rejoicing. No matter what his situation was, he knew what it was. The disciples were eh, confused, dazed, puzzled. But he still had joy in his heart. He still knew what was going on. There had to be so many questions swirling around the disciples' heads. Disciples of you and I, we would have all kinds of questions had we been there at that moment. The question is, what are we supposed to do next if you leave us, when you leave us? What are we going to do? Their answer came before they left the room. Jesus said to them, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one is greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Wow. Wow. This in itself is really a profound command, but listen, 
Day later, it took an enormous implication that Jesus hung suspended on a cross for them to kind of understand what going the extra mile means or being a good friend. What he commanded them to do was what he was about to do. After crucifixion, they probably looked at each other and wondered if they had the greater love that Jesus had taught them and talked to, talked to them about and led them to do. Do I really have that greater joy that would make me lay down my life, Dan, for another person that I call my friend with the joy have been made complete. They lived out their lives as obedient followers of Jesus Christ. That's the question all of us as disciples must answer. In looking at this, another scripture jumped out at me, Romans 5, verses 3 through 5. While it varies from translation to translation, there are two translations. The English Standard Version and the RSV uses joy terminology. The English version English, English Standard Version reads, not only that, but we are rejoicing in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. It is logical to assume that Paul's statement in Romans is about rejoicing in suffering. That sounds like an oxymoron that you're gonna rejoice while you're suffering. As the two young ladies stood on the porch of the parsonage, I was trying to find a way to rejoice because I was suffering in my spirit because they just had a script and they just kept going. They just assumed that I knew nothing about my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And even when I told them I did, they continued on. I had to find some joy when someone is talking to me and they're just talking to me inappropriately. Because some, you, you have to take your mind back to the same, probably Jesus had to do the same thing when talking to his disciples. I know there is joy coming. What I'm doing, there is joy coming. This is a temporary situation. And that's what I told myself. This conversation will not last long. The two young ladies finished what they had to say. I blessed them a good day, prayed with them, prayed for them. I told them to rejoice in the Lord, and they went off, puzzled, shaking their head. Then they walked toward the Dairy Queen, started to join them. I wanted something sweet to eat. Sorrow, my brothers and sisters, will always find its way into our lives. And we're going to face it all at some time, point, or another. But we have to have something in us that we don't miss it. That is there. We know who our Lord and Savior is. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 There will always be sorrow, but there's always a glimmer of something. Something that will make you smile. Something that is hard to explain. When things are going bad, if you ever just quiet yourself, just sat and just centered yourself and just thought, maybe something good is coming out of this. Ruth, maybe that's just my training that you try to find. Pastor Lori, that you try to find something to smile about in the situation, no matter what's going on. I know if I had been with Jesus in that time and they were talking, I'd have had so many questions, he'd probably put me out to Rome. You want us to have joy and you're about to leave us? Where is that written? <laughs> where is that in the book of discipline? I mean, <laughs> how, can I, how, can I get to, how can I get to that point? Every Christian believer will experience sorrow and grief 
that you might speak joy in that, that you have joy in that suffering. It's going to come. After initial pain and shock of what's happening, again, if you sit and you center yourself and place joy in your thoughts, there's some good things that have happened. We've all suffered some setbacks. We've all some of us suffered some death. But in those deaths, you can find moments of joy. There had to be something. I don't want to pick on anybody, but I just, I'm looking at your smiling face. There's something that your guy, Mitch, said or did that brought you joy. Gary with FedEx, UPS, DHL. I know there's something that he don't like. But it brings joy, it brings, it brings a laughter to you. It's a bad, tough situation, it's a hard thing, but there's something that brings you joy. Sean, I know there's things that you just really don't want to deal with and trying to work through, but if you think somewhere in there, in the crevice, in a corner, there was some joy during that time, it might have just been leaving home. It might have been something in there that brought you a smile to your face. Somebody in your squad, your platoon, said something silly, said something stupid that would make you laugh. There's all stuff that we go through that's just joy. Can we say joy? joy. Can we say joy again? Joy. There's a song, I think I, I played it one time, Joy, Joy, God's Great Joy. Joy, I'm, I'm not going to sing because my, my, my contract with Belltone has ran out, so I'm not paying for hearing aids. So, down in my heart, do you remember that joy is really the fruit of the Spirit? Joy is the fruit of God's work in our life. Amen. It's connected to a person, a character of God. Therefore, joy represents us and presents us in our deepest sorrow and our deepest grief. There's a fragrance of Emmanuel in joy. Emmanuel is God with us. That fragrance is always there. If you ever listen, go on someplace, maybe to a department store and they had perfumes on the counter and you walk by it and you don't know what you're smelling because everything is mixed together, but that fragrance stays with you as you walk a couple feet. Or ladies, as you put on perfume, Men, as we put on cologne, you, you, you walk in one room and out the other. You, that's the joy. That's the fragrance of God. That fragrance does not dissipate. We might think it does, but it doesn't. That fragrance of joy is in everything that we do, Maureen, is in everything that we do, is in everything that we experience. There's something your grandkids will bring joy to your life. I know I can have some tough days sometimes, and my oldest granddaughter called me this week. She is, the, she is one of the joys of my life. She had me cracking up on the floor laughing with just some idiotic jokes and some things that her dad did. I mean, it's just, it just, I find joy in that. And there's joy and there's hope in everything that's going on. I was sad, my mentor was dying with cancer. I had to sit with him, and we just, I had to make him laugh. I had to bring some joy into his life. He truly loved God. Look into the eyes of a mother who may have lost her son. You have to find joy in those moments. A friend that's going through some injustice, you have to bring some joy into their lives that there is going to be hope. I can grieve, but I can grieve with hope. Let me say it again. I can grieve, and I can grieve with hope. Because I have a giant secret. There's an unexpected visitor that's going to show up. It's called joy. Unspeakable joy is going to show up. I don't care what's going on. Joy is going to show up. I was on a bike ride yesterday down in Detroit on a 12-mile bike ride, and don't ask me what I was thinking. And I was thinking about the sermon to take my mind off the pain in my legs, Superman, because my legs was really 
bothering me at the uh, three mile mark. I wanted to quit at the five mile mark. <laughs> but I had to think, I switched my mind. <laughs> Pastor Ruth or something else. And I started singing to myself and folks around me were like, please don't sing. I'm like, I, I gotta bring some joy into my life. So I started singing a Motown tune and they said, what are you singing? I said, I have, don't know the words, but I'm trying to put myself in a different mindset. We have to do that consciously when things are going on with us. Think about something that's going to take you out of that current situation and bring you into a smile. I don't know how many of you ever walked across the Belle Isle Bridge, something I didn't think about. You have to go up and then it goes down. At the end of a, run, a, a bike ride, going up the hill, it's a bit taxing. Do I fall into the street or do I fall over the bridge into the river? Because I'm tired. I had to find joy in counting the light posts until I got to the apex. Once I got to the apex, it's downhill. Betty Sue, I'm going. And then you got to go down the ramp to get on. I was so happy. I had joy. Then it hit me. The rest of the way is downhill. I'm like, oh. I started singing again. The guy behind me said, please don't. Please, please don't. There is joy that we get in tough times. Anything that you're going through, there's joy. At times, it may seem unreasonable. It may seem unbelievable. It might even seem inappropriate to laugh in the face of things that are going on. It might seem inappropriate, but sometimes God allows us to see the unexpected visitor that is joy to show up. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God, amen. Here's the wow, the words of wisdom. Jesus knew about joy in ways that will make a profound difference in you and in me. Amen? Amen? amen. amen. And amen. amen. I had a order of worship here. All right, what's next? Communion. Okay. Do we have joy? Okay. You sure? You sure, Linda? Okay. All right. Uh, for me, page. Woo. Let this guy be off church for a while. All right. Speaking of which, I had the great opportunity. I was going to say something doing announcements. I may do that also. But Thursday evening here, oh, that's okay. Oh. Thursday evening here, the uh, National Day of Prayer, wonderful. Amen. Wonderful. Joy. Joy. To see four churches come, to see four churches come together, and pray for city government, for national government, world affairs, for families and marriages, service organizations, four churches, four different denominations. I know it happens here on a regular basis, but in my experiences, this is probably the second time in my years that I've seen that. The four of us have been in a, in, in a, in a text chat since talking about how just great it is. I mean, these, these gentlemen are, this is a wonderful community 
to minister in because there are some wonderful church leaders, men of God, people of God in this community. And when we had to make a change in addition, and thank you, Pastor Lori, for stepping in and helping with communion. Uh, they, were, they were gracious, they were accepting, and, it, it, and it, it, just, it just went well. If you would, on page 12 or on the screen, the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's suffering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Pastor Glory, will you?
Let us take the Eucharist together. Give me a minute, catch my breath. This is the body of Christ that was broken for you. Take and eat. This, my brothers and sisters, is the blood of Christ, which was shared just for you. Do this in remembrance of him. Offering stewards come at this time, please. laugh at me. Let's uh, dedicate the offerings. Dear most heavenly and gracious Father, we sit in humble submission to you, to your authority, to your power, to your will, because we have that joy, that unmistakable joy that you have given us. And we've shown part of that joy and part of our love and our offerings through tithes and offering. It doesn't mean that we love you less because all we have is what we give, and we give it from the heart. Now bless this offering and let it be used in this ministry the way you would have it used. It's not about us, it's all about you. The audience are one, you're the God of our creation. We ask all this in Jesus' name, amen? Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Whew. Let me do the announcements. Can you sign up for coffee hour? Uh, next Sunday, we won't be doing a Mother's Day brunch. We just, that fell through, put that on me. I'll, I'll take the blame for that. This Thursday at 6 p.m. Oh, I'm sorry, we're doing announcements. Dun, 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 Thank you. Next four weeks, we'll be doing Bible study on prevenient grace. Some of you already have your books. Those that don't have them, see me and I will give you your book. It's by Dan Boone, not Daniel Boone, but Dan Boone for the next four weeks. There's a food drive on Saturday. Many hands make light work. Come for an hour or say the day, sorting, shelving, and storing. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. <clears throat> I'll have something special for you on Mother's Day. Pentecost Sunday is May 19th. Please wear something red on that day. 
May 26th is Memorial Day weekend. Remember those who have, thank you Bradley, who are, who will serve our country. March birthdays, Bolton will be six. I know it's, it's on the six, I'm just teasing. I know it's on the six. Mike Dooley is the 16th. Pam and Patty Allen is on the 16th. Wynn Good is on the 20th. Wayne Reams, who is someplace in Branson, Missouri as we speak. His birthday is on the 20th. Gail Warren is the 25th. And Marion is on the 29th. Is there any other birthdays that we've missed, that I've missed? Okay. <clears throat> you sing, I'll listen. I see a couple other names up there that <clears throat> I omitted. Okay. <sighs> Missing something. Hmm? Introduce who? I'm just joking. This morning, we have the rare privilege of getting a daughter of the church who is now a pastor and an elder in the Michigan Conference East Winds District who sits on the District Committee on Ministry, I was going to say DCOM District Committee on Ministry and during our session, that's the group that, well she'll tell you what they do but I asked put a request out, I said, folks in Algonac at Trinity would love to see someone from the district's bright, shiny face or from the conference. And a voice spoke up on Zoom and said, oh, I used to live in a parsonage. I would love to come. So if you would, kind of a homecoming for one of your daughters, the church's daughters, which helped me welcome the Reverend Ruth Vander. See, when you're a little fatigued, your mind. Vander. Vander Sandy. Vander Sandy. Irish was much easier. Thank you. Thank you. I, yeah, Irish was easier. Well, I think it's safe to say a few things have changed since the last time I was here in 2011. Yes, that was the year I graduated. You might remember when we, my family came, uh, Reverend Dennis Irish. He was also, oh, hi, Lily. This is my daughter. He brought with him a gaggle of children. Sam, who was three. Sarah, who was, oh gosh, seven. I was nine, and my brother was 11. Well, here's some shocking numbers for you. Nate is now 33. I am 30. Sarah's 28, and Sam is 25. So yeah, that's terrifying. I broke at least one window of your church, so I know that's been replaced. And Sam broke another one, so we were, yeah, terrorizing Terror. was the right word. Uh, we were little terrors. But it's wonderful to be back. Hey, are you going to stay this time? Yeah? Okay. It's wonderful to be back here and to be here in such a weird way, right? Everything comes full circle. I'm here because of the District Committee on Ministry, but uh, it's an honor to be here for uh, Reverend Diggs. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. You guys, he's a good one. You better hold on to him. He's wonderful. Inappropriate joy. What a great message for today. And, you know, it reminded me of those days. I don't know if you remember how much my dad liked to sing. A few of you might, and every Easter he would sing that one song, the you've turned my morning into dancing again, you've lifted my sorrows, and I can't stay silent, I must sing for his joy has come. Hey, yeah, remember that one? That's what I couldn't help but think of, that whole sermon. I like to show off, why do you think I come around and do this? That was the whole reason. 
But anyhow, I'm here on behalf of DCOM or District Committee on Ministry just, just to share a little bit about what we do and how we are able to support your wonderful pastor. And so our main purpose is essentially to meet with people who feel a call into ministry, particularly into the local pastor ministry. And we meet with them annually and just talk with them, evaluate their growth in ministry, uh, their growth in the Wesleyan doctrine and the ministry of church. This is one of those uh, not so rare occasions where I believe your pastor is more qualified than me. Uh, so thank you for that. <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. Um, we also check on pastors and we help support them. So we encourage them to attend to their spiritual, psychological, emotional, and physical well-being. But we also offer resources for growth and for uh, ways to sign up for things called course of study, which helps to support local pastor. We make recommendations on growth areas and then again offer those resources for that. Um, and we make sure that a pastor is moving forward in course of study so that way we can credential them properly because that is our primary responsibility. I know, super fun conversation, right? Credentials. Um, we are a credentialing committee, so we make sure that we give people the authority to become licensed local pastors. And if they do want to move forward in the process and become ordained, we are the committee that you have to sit before and do a pre-interview that says yes or no to going before the big board the Board of Ordained Ministry, which is the conference board. So essentially what we do is we support and we resource. We show up when pastors invite us, which was, again, wonderful. Thank you. And uh, we are not, the big thing is we are not a supervisor that is the DS. We are the ones who get to be the nice ones, and we come along and we say, yeah, we'll help you any way we can. So that's a little bit on what we do and how we are able to support your pastor. And um, again, thank you for letting me be here and steal your mic and sing in it and show off a little bit. But thank you so much. So she sings. Yeah, whatever. Thanks, Rich. Thank you, Reverend Ruth. Sending forth with a prayer this, this morning. I pray that you have joy in your life. It may be inappropriate at times to think about joy, but in the midst of everything that's going on in this world, God, you know exactly what's going on, and we still have to find that joy. We still have to find that moment of, of hope and something we can smile in. We're about to go into an election season where it's getting heated on both sides. Let us find some joy in knowing that we have the right and the privilege that few other countries have. We get the opportunity to vote. There is joy in that one statement. We get to vote in a free and an open election. We get to vote. There is joy in being an American. There is a joy in being a Michigander. There is a joy in being a Musrat here in Algonac. Lord, continue to give us this joy as we go forth. This is not a benediction, it's a going forth. It's a sending forth for us to go out and do joy, an unspeakable joy, an explainable joy to others. That others may see us and wonder what are they so happy and joyful about. Say all these things in the most magnificent name that we know of your Son, our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, and all in attendance in the social media and on the phone, say amen, 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 amen. amen. and amen. amen. Yes, Dan. Yes, sir.
Yeah, I had a joy uh, last Monday at Mallard's Landing. Um, the St. Clair Community Singers uh, sang, and it was pretty cool because the men, the men are we're singing this, we're singing today at uh, St. Peter's Lutheran at three o'clock, and uh, we sang uh, "Sweet Caroline," and you know that song, "Bom Bom Bom." The, what was so funny, the older people did that too. But it was a blessing. And I, I'm looking forward to doing it today, you know, singing. And it's in my heart to sing, and, and I love singing for God. But it's a lot of good songs we're singing. One we're singing, uh, uh, it's like an ancient, the last song we're singing is like an ancient in, Indian song. So we had to learn that one. It's called Hey Ya, uh, Hey Ya. Uh, you know, the men are saying, Hey Ya, uh, Oh Hey Ya, uh, Oh Hey Ya. Uh. And the women are saying something different in, in, in the Indian culture. So it's going to be different. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You reminded me of something. There's on Tuesday at 5 o'clock at the Catholic Church, Lutheran Church. Yeah, like I said, at the Lutheran Church, uh, Sister Act. <laughs> nice recovery. Sister <laughs> The uh, Sister Act will be there at 5 o'clock at the Lutheran Church, yes. All right. You, are, you may rise. Uh, our acolyte, will you take the, light of the, oh, take the light of Christ out? Please join us downstairs for a administrative council meeting immediately after service. I knew it was something I forgot. See you downstairs. <laughs> 